Let me bring in Kira Rudik now. She is a member of the Ukrainian parliament and leader of the Holos party in Ukraine. She joins me from Kiev. Uh, Ms. Rudik, uh, thanks for taking time to speak with me. Uh, we've spoken before and I appreciate you taking time again tonight. Um, first, can you tell us what the situation there is there now? Uh, have there been any stepped up attacks from Russia? Because a lot of people were worried that this is a day Vladimir Putin would pick to uh, increase uh, attacks in Ukraine. What's the situation tonight? Hello, thank you so much for having me again. It's a pleasure to be here on the show. So we were indeed worried a lot about today's day and what could happen. Uh, I can tell you personally, we were worried that uh, there could be a tactical nuclear attack on Kiev or uh, some of the major cities of Ukraine. Thank God it didn't happen. Uh, thank God that uh, Putin did not announce uh, on some further step. On the other hand, we also know that he usually acts without announcing of what he would do. So uh, today was uh, fairly uh, peaceful in Ukraine. Uh, however, there was an attack on the school in the east uh, of the country. And so uh, now the amount of children that were hurt are still being calculated. We have uh, all uh, listened to what Mr. Putin was saying uh, and the Red Square tell you this is a great example uh, as an, of an answer of why we cannot get into agreement with Russia. They live in this imaginary world where NATO wanted to attack them, where Ukraine is not a sovereign state that can uh, attack us, where Russian soldiers are fighting on their land, which I totally disagree because it's our land, Ukrainian land, right. and so on and so on. So. Uh, when the um, uh, person is living in this imaginary world, when they are living in this propaganda, uh, it's impossible to come into any kind of agreement. It's impossible to okay. get into any peaceful negotiation. The, the, the war has now entered its 11th week. And as you uh, say, Vladimir Putin did not use the speech today to declare victory or to escalate the conflict uh, or to order a general mobilization of Russian troops against Ukraine, as many had predicted. He didn't... Uh, uh, nuclear war, although, as you say, he did slam the West and NATO. Uh, where do you think the conflict is headed then? Well, um, we plan to win and to push Russia back from uh, our make sure that they wouldn't come back again. What Putin is saying we need to be concentrated on our plan and by the whole democratic world. We need to make sure that we have all the sanctions in place. We need to make sure that Russia does not find uh, new markets for its uh, energy resources. We need to make sure that Ukraine is receiving enough weapons, and we need to make sure that things are going fast. No matter what Putin says on Red Square, no matter what his plans are, we need to follow up our plan. And our plan is to win. You see, as of right now, Putin was not able to declare any victory. Mm. They did not even declare the victory of Mariupol. And you know why? Because they did not take Mariupol. Because our defenders are still there. They know it's a suicide mission, but they continue to defend it with their own lives. So now we are very motivated. The Ukrainians' morale is very high. We are getting more and more weapons from uh, our allies. And we are planning to use these weapons uh, to make sure that Russians go from away from our land. This is as simple as that. Okay. Uh, Canada's Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, uh, made a surprise visit to Kiev on the weekend, reopened the Canadian... Uh, he announced more sanctions, offered more funding for weapons. Uh, how important was it to you for Canada's Prime Minister to visit Kiev? And are you satisfied with the support you've been seeing from Canada? Uh, Canada has been actually spearheading many processes uh, that we like to see from our allies, starting from sanctions, financial support. But there are two very important points for me as a member of parliament and for my country. The first is voting for Russia as a country sponsor of terror. Second, uh, claiming that Russia is a war criminal. These are two things that are critically important. And uh, right now they are in process to be voted in Canada. And I'm uh, extremely grateful uh, to uh, Prime Minister Trudeau for forcing uh, these actions uh, in, um, in Canadian parliament. So 
Uh, I'm, uh, we are extre we're extremely happy to have a, a prime minister here. He's uh, obviously a star uh, and uh, a sign of a great support and courage that we are receiving from, uh, um, from our brothers and sisters in, in Canada. It's important for my people to see that there is no Ukraine fatigue, that the whole world is behind us as never before. Do not afraid to come here and say, we are with Ukraine. We are not leaving you alone here. We are going to support you no matter what. Uh, here, is what uh, here is the hand that we are showing you uh, and uh, uh, directing you together to the, towards the victory. So uh, it, it was amazing and it was a huge ramp up for morale for all Ukrainians uh, um, around Ukraine. All right. Uh, Kira Riddick, uh, thank you so much for uh, speaking to me tonight and to give us your perspective on uh, where we are uh, 11 weeks into this war, uh, Russia's war against Ukraine. Thanks so much for your time and please take care. Thank you and glory to Ukraine.